<sighs> Inhale, reach up, extended mountain. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift, tricep pull if you've got weights. High push up and pause. Right knee to right elbow. Left knee to left elbow. Low push up. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Take a full breath in together. Exhale it out. Good. Two more like that. In. Clear it out. Last one. Exhale completely. Move forward. Feet to hands. Halfway lift. Tricep pull. Fold down. Extended mountain rise all the way up. Press your feet into the floor. Fold. Halfway lift. Tricep pull. High push up. Knee tap on the right. Knee tap on the left. Low plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Three big breaths. In. Clear it out. Breath in. Exhale. Good. Last one. Empty to the pit of your belly. Move forward. Halfway lift. Tricep pull. Fold down. Extended mountain. Rise up. Plug your feet down. Fold. Halfway lift. Tricep pull. High push up. Low push up. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. I taught regular JIP earlier. And now I'm like, what? Knee taps? What's going on? <laughs> Take a deep breath in together. Exhale it out. It's been a long day. Breath in and clear it. One more. Exhale everything. Feet to hands. Halfway lift. Tricep pull. Fold down. Extended mountain. Rise up. Go back on this one. Stretch. Forward fold. Halfway lift with your weights. High push up. Knee tap on the right. Knee tap on the left. Low plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Breath in. Clear it out. Yes. Breathe in. Empty. Last one. Tail everything. Step or jump to your hands. Halfway lift. Tricep pull. Fold down. Rise up. Extended mountain. Spread your fingertips. Fold. Halfway lift. Tricep pull. High plank. Knee tap on the right. And on the left, low plank. Upward facing. Down dog. Breath in together. Empty it out. Two more. In. Empty. Last one. Empty out. Step or jump forward. Halfway lift. Tricep pull. Fold down. You've got one more sun A. Rise all the way up. Look up. Forward fold. Halfway lift. Tricep pull. High plank. Knee tap. Knee tap. Low plank. Upward facing. Downward facing. Breath in together. Big exhale out. Two more. In. Empty. Last one. Fill. Empty on purpose. Feet to hands. Halfway lift. Tricep pull. Fold down. Grab your block for chair pose. You want your block between your palms and the chair. So on the widest setting between your palms, sit back and reach through your fingertips. Press in on the block. Everyone stopped breathing because I threw you off with the block. Add breath back in. I know. We're going to add this in, but keep the breath flow. One more inhale. Forward fold. Halfway lift. Tricep pull. High plank. Knee tap on the right. Knee tap on the left. Low plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Right side warrior one. Step through. You can have weights in your hands or open palms. Chaturanga. Hands to the mat. Upward facing. Downward facing. Left side warrior one. Press. One big breath all the way up. Chaturanga. Hands to the mat. Up dog. Downward facing dog. Take a breath in. Empty out. Good. Breathe in and clear it. Last one. Exhale completely. Move forward. Halfway lift. Tricep pull. Fold down. Grab your block. Chair pose and stay. It'll still be a couple of breaths, but now you've got the rhythm to it. 
press your palms on the block instead of using grippy fingertips. Yes, there you go. One more inhale, forward fold. Halfway lift, tricep pull, high plank. Knee tap, knee tap, low plank. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Warrior one on the right, step it through, go all the way up to your fingertips. Chaturanga, hands down. Upward, downward, left side, warrior one. Just one breath to stretch up. Low push up, hands to the mat. Upward facing, downward facing. Breathe in together. Exhale it out. <sighs> breath in, breath out. Last one. Empty the pit of your belly. Move forward. Halfway lift. Tricep pull. Fold down. Chair pose with your block. Steady, rhythmic breath. Lift and spread your toes off the mat. Yes. One more inhale. Fold. Halfway lift. Tricep pull. High plank. Knee on the right, knee on the left, low plank, up dog, downward facing, right side warrior one, take a big step and a long inhale, chaturanga on your exhale, upward, downward facing, left side, step, long, slow inhale, all the way up, chaturanga, hands to the floor, up dog, downward facing dog, breathe in together, Clear it out. <sighs> yeah, you can sigh. Breath in, breath out. One more. Exhale completely. Feet to hands. Halfway lift with your weights. Fold down. Chair pose with your blocks. Sit back, lift your toes. So you're really working to integrate shoulder blades together, arm muscles into bones. Forward fold. Halfway lift. Tricep pull. High plank. Knee taps and low plank, upward facing dog, downward facing dog, right side warrior one, step through, stretch up and lift your chest, chaturanga, upward, downward facing, left side, step through, you got it, press, lift, reach, chaturanga, inhale up, exhale down, big breath in, empty two more exhale last one all together empty completely feet to hands halfway lift tricep pull fold down chair pose last sun b press with your palms integrate the muscle to bone big inhale fold halfway lift tricep pull high push up knee tap Knee tap, low push up, upward facing, downward facing. Warrior one on the right, step it through, go all the way up and stretch back. Chaturanga. Up dog, downward facing dog, left side. Warrior one, last one on this side, reach, low push up. Inhale up, exhale down. Ho. Oh. Yeah, I'm sweating too. It is toasty in here tonight. Hopefully it's as toasty at home. Take a deep breath in together. Sigh it out. Yeah, like actually sigh though. Breath in. <sighs> yeah, one more. Empty it out. Send your right leg straight up and back. Bend your knee and open your hip. Flip your dog. You got it. And then right away, if wheel pose is there for you, take it. If not, take cactus arm and work your shoulder blades together on your back. Yes, that space where the shoulder blades come in toward the spine and it expands your chest from collarbone to collarbone. Beautiful. Flip back over side plank. You can have a weight in your left hand or open palm up to the ceiling. Start with the breath. And you can add on the fancy bits of the leg in the air or some kind of a bind or reaching forward. Like you create it and make sure the breath is happening as well. One more inhale. High to low push up. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Send your left leg up to the sky. Bend your knee and open your hip. Make some space. Flip your dog. 
go right into it. The wheel, if it's there, the cactus arm, if it's not, and the cactus arm might be like your halfway point. You're almost to wheel, but not quite, and you're making more space. Flip back over, side plank. Steady Ujjayi breath. If you need to hit the reset button and exhale through your mouth or side, do that, and then come back to the breath. Take the fullest expression, whatever that means to you in your side plank, and spread your fingertips apart. Yeah, one more breath. Low push up. Big breath in up dog. Let it out and down dog. Oh. One breath in. One breath out. Right side crescent lunge. Step through, grab your block. So you have the block on the widest setting right at heart center instead of up in the air. So feet first and then get the attention right here. So your elbows straight out to the side, and that'll give you the space you need to squeeze your shoulder blades together on your back. If you pick a more narrow setting, there's room for your shoulder blades to round out to the side. So wide a setting and press. Good. One more breath in here. Twist right. Keep the block right where it is. Little wonky at first because there's more space now, but it'll give you the room you need to squeeze your shoulder blades together. Yes, stay right here and breathe. Plug your front big toe mount straight into the mat. Yes, just like that. You've got one more inhale. Stay for the exhale. Twist, twist, twist. Warrior two, block stays between your palms. Just like that, elbows out to the side. Deep lunge in your front leg. I know. So some of you have the block up pretty high. You can bring it down by your chest. Let your shoulders drop. Good. Shoulder blades together. Keep the block, extended side angle. Bring your front elbow down towards your thigh. Top elbow somewhere up to the ceiling or a little bit back behind you. So the integration of shoulder blades into spine can stay right there. Add more breath. I feel like there's so much attention on the block, we're losing the breath again. Come back to the breath. Deepen the lunge. Yes. One more inhale here. High to low push up. Woof. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. One breath in. One breath out. Left side crescent lunge. Block at heart center on the widest setting. Yep. Squeeze it in. And get settled into your feet. All of your toes on your back foot. The big toe mat on your front foot. Straight down into the mat. Press into the block. Yes. Come a little lower. Mm-hmm. Twist left. You've got it. So notice if your bottom shoulder, your right shoulder is starting to tuck into the front so that you can twist, pull it back onto the back side of your body. Yes, I can see some of you are like, okay, I'm not really sure. I'm just kind of playing with it. Keep doing that. Get your shoulder blades integrated onto the back side of your body. One more breath here. Stay for the exhale. Twist. Warrior two with your block at heart center. I know. I know. Come down into it. So many cool things slash in parentheses, not fun things you can do with a block. Come down deep in the warrior two lunge. Elbows straight out. Press. Press. This is what we mean when we say expand the chest and upper back. This gives you both of those actions. Extended side angle. Elbow to your thigh. Right elbow goes somewhere between the wall behind you and up toward the ceiling, depending on how far you're leaning forward. Nice, Rob. Shoulder blades squeeze into your spine. Good, Jessica. Yeah, and then it's back to the breath to fill the space. One more inhale together. High to low push up. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Take a full breath in together. Empty it out. <sighs> Number two. And clear it. Last one. Exhale completely. Feet to hands. Halfway lift. Tricep pull. Fold down. Chair pose with your block. Yep, reach through your fingertips with the blocks. You sit way back in your hips. Press, press, press. You got it. Keep the block. Iron footstool. Rise onto the ball mounds of your feet and reach your arms and your blocks straight forward. Palms pressed in. Drop your heels. Block to your heart. Twist right. 
Yeah, there's a little more room to work with, a little bit wonky, I know. So some of you might not be able to get your elbow quite on the outside of your knee, but squeeze the shoulder blades together. Let the elbow, the bottom elbow, settle where it needs to be. Good. Stay right here and breathe. You got it. Five, four, three, press, two, one. Chair pose, fold. First two fingers around your big toes. I know it's like a secret weapon. The block can be your best friend or your worst enemy in a class or just a teaching tool. Gaze at the back edge of your mat. Yeah, decide that instead of being the enemy of the block the whole class, you're just learning a new thing. Learning upper back integration. Crow pose from the head of your mat. You got it. Squeeze everything in and up and draw the inner edges of your feet in towards center. So pretend like you've got a block between your feet and you don't want to drop it on the floor. Yes, just like that. Gaze locked on one spot. Step or jump back. Low push-up. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Take a full breath in together. Clear it out. Breath in. Breath out. Last one. Empty it out. Feet to hands. Halfway lift. Tricep pull. Fold down. Grab your block. Chair pose. You got it. Way back into your hips. Squeeze your arm muscles into the bone. Iron footstool. Rise on the ball mounds of your feet and reach straight in front of you. Yes. Thighs parallel with the floor. Drop the heels. Block to heart. Twist left. Stay in it. Stay pressed into that block. The top hand as much as the bottom hand. Five, four, three, two, one. Chair pose. Press. Fold. Gorilla. Oh, now we're getting the block throwing. Okay, I know where we are. Toes up to your wrist. The, ugh, I just, yes, I know. I know. We're learning a thing, and sometimes that's a little bit rough. Gaze at the back edge of your mat back into your breath. Let it be a come back to breath pose here. Keep the breath steady. Crow number two. Steady breath in crow number two. So the muscles that you've already warmed up that are working in your upper back and helping to hug your scapula, your shoulder blades in toward your spine, use those. Hug them into center. Some of you are already headed upside down or playing around with different things. Cool. Do that. Eyes on one spot. One more breath. Step or jump back. Low push-up. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Take a full breath in together. Exhale it out. <sighs> breath in. Full exhale. Last one. Empty it out. Move forward, halfway lift, tricep pull, fold down, rise all the way up to standing. Eagle pose, right side, right arm under, right leg over. Yeah, eagle pose a lot of the time, it, by the time you get to this point in the practice, it's like you're coming up for air out of, out of your, being underwater for 20 minutes, up and out for air. Sink down into the four corners of your feet. Keep your arms bound. Take airplane with your legs. Press, press, press that foot straight back. Get as long as you can get. Full airplane. Reach your arms straight back. Now squeeze your shoulder blades together in your upper back. Enough that you build heat in your upper back. The shoulder blades squeeze into your vertebrae and your spine. Half moon. Open up. Yeah, a hand can land on the block now that it's your friend, or you can hover, fingertips above the floor. Shoulder blades together on your back. Keep squeezing them in. Yes. One more breath here. Both feet to the mat. Eagle pose, left side. Left arm under, left leg over. Man, Amy, I'm going to need to borrow your hair tie in a second here. Sweaty stuff in here. Sink down into your hips. Root the center of your standing heel straight down. Arms stay bound. Airplane with your legs. 
This is the yoga I like. The very sweaty, very in the work airplane. Reach your arms straight back. This is where shift starts to happen. Not the kind of sort of yoga where your head was somewhere else the whole time. Shoulder blades together. Integrate. Keep them integrated. Open to half moon. The space where you're really up to something and there is no room for anything else to get in the way. It is the biggest, fullest poses, the most effort you've got to give, both feet to the floor. Rise up to standing. Standing bow or dancer's pose, right side. Dancers, grab your strap, standing bow, soft crease of the elbow faces out so that shoulder blade stays on the back of your body. Great, Rob, yes, use the wall. Now, a lot of the time we pay attention to the foot or the standing leg in this pose. I want you to put your attention on your right shoulder. Press your right shin so far back that you can literally feel the front of your right shoulder opening and stretching. Open and stretch. Switch sides. Standing bow or dancer on the left. Yeah, take an exhale if you need that. Pause for a second if you need that, and then regroup. New pose, left side. Press back enough to peel open the front of your left shoulder. Yes, Karen. Big inhale. Both feet to the mat. Right side, second set. If you want to switch the pose you're taking, standing bow or dancer, go ahead. Get settled. Settle them standing foot, and then take your pose. Steady breath. The shin back as far as it can go to open your shoulder. Yes, Kelly. Good, Maisie. One more inhale. Switch. Last one. You got it. Eyes on one spot. Steady breath to keep you on the standing leg. Your attention on your left shoulder. The space in your left shoulder. One more inhale. Feet to the mat. Oh, tree pose on the right with cactus arms. So you can have weights if you want for the cactus arms or just open palms, but everyone take cactus arms. Right side tree. Mm -hmm. Breathe right here. Before making any adjustments or moving around a lot, you just right here, see what there is to see and assess. Shoulder blades together. Mm -hmm. So for a lot of you, that's your upper arm bones a little further back out of your peripheral vision. And then a handful of you, front ribs in towards center. Good. Yeah, shoulder blades together, ribs in. Breathe right here. Big and full in your chest and your upper back. Last inhale. Switch sides. Cactus arms again, foot anywhere, but on the side of your knee is a good place. And then you check it out. Are the arms curving forward? Can you take them back and pull your upper arm bones out of your peripheral vision? Is that now splaying your ribs out like barn doors? Can you gather those back into center? It's really like trying to hold all the kinks in a garden hose and now it's water over here and you got that. Okay, now it's water over there. You just keep working through. One more breath, lift up tall, both feet to the floor. Come up to the head of your mat if you're not there already. Extended mountain, reach up to the ceiling, forward fold. Halfway lift, tricep pull, high push up. A knee tap on the right and a knee tap on the left, low plank. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Take a full breath in together, clear it out. Good, breath in. Breath out. One more. Exhale completely. Right side triangle. Step your right foot between your hands. Grab your block on the outside of your shin. Yeah, especially if you don't normally go for a block and triangle, try that on and see if you can integrate and pull your shoulder blades together on your back with the block. It's just a more solid thing to touch to give you that sensation. And then some of you might take it down to the second setting or the last setting on the block and still keep those shoulder blades together. Beautiful. Ribs together in the front. Yes, Philomena. Press into your feet. Rise all the way to stand. 
side facing wide leg fold. Turn both of your feet to face the long edge of your mat and hinge forward. So you've got two options with this fold tonight. You can walk your hands back between your feet and lengthen that way or walk them out in front, fingertips on the floor and stretch tailbone to the crown of your head. Either one of those, the longest line you can make from tailbone to crown. Yeah, some of you are even using the block, having your hands on the block in front. That's great. Long, long line, crown to tailbone. A little bit of softness in your knees. Keep that. Yes. Press into your feet. Rise all the way up to standing. Namaste, front facing forward fold or split pose. Lots of you have been working on splits. So if you're taking the namaste fold, just make sure that your feet are at least hip width distance apart and then hinge forward. Those of you in the split, it's the front of the pelvis up to the belly button and that'll increase the stretch in your left hip. Stay in that space. Add more breath. Got a little quiet, toes up to the ceiling, splits. Yes, Al, there you go. Toes up to the ceiling. Twisting triangle or twisting split. You can have your left hand on the block for the twisting triangle, split. The block is always a super helpful tool there too. Heart wide open, shoulder blades together. Good. Big inhale here. High to low push up. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Take one breath in. Big exhale, left side triangle, block on the outside of your shin. I always like to start with the highest setting, even if I know I'm going to a lower one because it might be a day where the shoulders are a little bit tight and the higher block setting feels better. And then if it needs to go lower, you just adjust the block, no big deal. Shoulder blades together on your back, ribs together on your front. Yes, Rachel. Soften your toes. Yes. Press into your feet. Rise up. Side facing wide leg fold. Feet parallel, if not a little pigeon toed. Take your bind behind your back. Fingers interlaced or a towel between your hands and then hinge. Now, different stretch on the shoulders. Let the shoulders be soft and allow gravity to open you up. Take your arms down towards the floor. So however far they go, perfect. Breathe right there. Yeah, breathe right there. Let it soften. Let the exhales create more space for you in your upper back. More space for you across the front of your shoulders, right around your pec minor muscle. Release your hands down, press into your feet and rise up. Namaste front facing or splits. Toes up to the ceiling for the splits. Namaste folds, you got it. Take your pose. More breath. Now is a really good check-in point. How big can you make the inhales? How long can you make the exhales? You've been doing a lot of work, so check in. See how much room there is. Twisting triangle or twisting split. Steady, rhythmic breath. Make the breath powerful. So when the body starts to get a little tired, it's got the fuel of oxygen to keep it going. One more. High to low push up. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. I think it's time for another side. Breathe in together. <sighs> breath in and clear it last one <sighs> roll out to your high plank shoulders right on top of your wrists hold the plank or mountain climbers bring your knees into your nose go for 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 one, lower all the way to the floor. Locust pose, hands back by your hips. Palms face the mat, rise up. 
Rise up. Different from the locust pose that feels like business as usual. Squeeze the shoulder blades together enough that there is an effort in your upper back. More effort than you normally do here. Really pull them in. Yes, I can see backs getting red. That's what you want. You want the heat in your upper back. One more breath. Lower down. Rock your hips left and right. You got this. You're almost to the peak. Locust number two, hands can stay by your hips or interlace them at your low back. Attention on the upper back. Shoulder blades in. Let it get warm. Let those muscles pull into your bones, right in your upper back to integrate and make space in your chest. One more inhale, lower down, hip side to side. I know, right? Hard work is work. Floor bow, grab a hold of your ankles. We're taking two, so if you want to take one at a time, that's there for you. Grab your ankle or ankles. Press your shin straight back. Straight back. So just like standing bow, you press the shins to open up the chest and get the shoulder blades on your back. Every time you keep pulling them back, it makes it easier for those bones to go back where they belong. One more breath. Lower down side to side. Go for it. Number two, floor bow number two, switch legs or grab both up and away from the floor. Press your shins back to pull those shoulder blades together. Make them touch the sides of your spine. Big inhale, lower down, side to side. Upward facing dog, you got it. Rise up off your mat. Downward facing dog, press back. Take a full breath in, a full breath out. Jump through to sit. Make your way to bridge pose. You can take your block with you if you like to put that between your thighs and bridge. If you're like, I've had enough of this block, no. <laughs> no, I'm just doing bridge pose. Do that. Press your feet into the mat. Rise up. Now you've done all this work in your upper back. Tuck your shoulder blades underneath you. Whether you've got your hands bound or your arms in cactus, shoulder blades underneath you. Bring the breath here. Now's the time. Yeah, and if you can't hear your neighbor breathing, breathe louder, bring them in. If you're breathing at home, breathe loud enough that someone outside of your practice space can hear you. Big inhale, lower down, knees side to side. Bridge number two, press down, rise up. You got it, shoulder blade integration. Pull them in towards your spine. Pull your shoulder heads, the ends of your shoulders, straight down into the floor. Blades in, head straight down. Big inhale. Lower down. Take it side to side. All right, yogis, you are definitely ready for wheel number one. You've got all the space you need. Tuck your fingertips under your shoulders. Press down, go up. Wheel pose. Now, just check out the space in your upper back. All of that work come to fruition in a big back bend. Tuck your chin and come down. Breathe in together. Breathe out. Number two, wheel pose. You got it. Rise up. Now is the time. If your brain is saying, I'm too tired or making it more complicated, now is the time. Come on down. Breath in. Breath out. Number three, press and go. Get that four-part breath steady and rhythmic to fill all of the space. Come on down. Breathe in. Big exhale. Number four, you're past the halfway point. Bridge your wheel up and away from the mat. Eyes set. One spot. Lower down. Breathe in. Breath out. Number five, there's only two more. Rise up. Press and go fingertips and feet straight into the mat, lower down, breath in, big exhale, last one yogis, rise up, wheel pose, wheel pose, stay up for five, four, three, two, one, supta baddha konasana, holy moly, gaze up at the ceiling, set your eyes right on one spot, mm-hmm, I like to put my arms in a diamond shape here overhead because that feels really nice on my shoulders. So maybe that works for you too. 
or maybe cactus arms feels good here. Just let them settle. Happy baby or dead bug. A lot of times we focus on the hips or the knees in the happy baby or dead bug. Think about your shoulders being down on the floor. Whether you're rocking side to side or staying still, shoulders on the floor. Legs straight up in the air. Set up for scissor legs. You can have your hands flat down on the floor next to your hips or tucked underneath your hips for more support. Lower your right leg halfway to the mat. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, switch. Good. Stay. Breathe in. Exhale, switch. Go with the rhythm of your breath. Steady and rhythmic. No rush. Just integration. Muscle to bone. Keep going for 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Legs straight up. They can stay by your side or you can tuck them underneath. Lower both legs 30 degrees. Squeeze your inner thighs together. Lower 60. Lower to hover. Flutter kicks. Five, four, Three, two, one. Legs up. Belly down to the mat. Reset. Set number two. Lower 30. Lower 60. Lower to hover. Scissor legs. One foot over the other. Five, four, three, two, one. Legs up. You've got one more set. One more set of these. Lower 30. Lower 60. Lower to hover. Pendulum. Swing the legs side to side. Five, four, three, two, one. Legs up. Knees into your chest. Oh, yeah. That's good. Rock forward and back. Make your way to boat pose. Grab your block for your boat pose. Block right at heart center so you can have legs up in the air or feet down on the ground for more stability. Row the boat side to side. 20, 19. 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. Keep breathing. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Downward facing dog. Get this block away from me. I don't like our relationship right now. Right side half pigeon. You could put the block under your forehead here. We'll make it a helpful tool in your half pigeon. As you make your way down, settle. Settle. All of that work to get to the opening section of the sequence so that opening can actually happen. When I first started practicing, I was like, yeah, let's do the hip openers in the beginning. And for flexible people, you're like, yeah, sure, let's do that. But there's a lot of stuff that has to get out of the way before these hip openers can be super effective. Things need to be warmed up and stretched out and cleared out and room made for the hips to open up. You did the work, you settle in the half pigeon. Steady rhythmic breath. Keep coming back to that. Really specific. You've made a lot of room, lots of expansion in your chest and upper back. Invite more air in with the inhales more air out with the exhales like that air the residual air in the bottom of your lungs a long enough exhale that it clears that out you've got a few more breaths you can stay here or take king pigeon bend your back knee and grab a hold of your ankle or your foot some of you might lasso your foot with a strap and use that that's a good tool here too Thank you. 
steady breath. Downward facing dog, shake it out. Left side, half pigeon. Full breaths, purposeful breath. There's an old fable about meditation. That's one of my favorite things that talks about breathing. There's a, you know, the classic wise old yogi with the beard and the, like the whole get up and that whole thing. And he's teaching this early 20 something how to meditate. And he keeps teaching him, we're just paying attention to the breath every day. It's just paying attention to the breath. And eventually that person gets super bored just paying attention. Like, I want something exciting. Give me something really cool, something that's really exciting to pay attention to. And his teacher is like, okay, yeah, we could do that. We can do something more exciting than the breath. So he, he's like, all right, we're going to go outside today. So he walks him out to the front of his house and grabs him by the back of the head and shoves his head in a bucket of water. And the kid starts flapping around everywhere and splashing water everywhere. And he pulls him back out of the water and he goes, oh my God, what are you doing? And he said, well, your breath got really interesting, didn't it? So King Pigeon, if you took it on the other side, the point of the story is if you're getting to a point where you're forgetting about the breath and it doesn't feel important, it doesn't feel like it's a key piece of the practice, it's time to relook at that. What is it about the breath to you that's making it boring? Is it something that's holding you back? Is it something that's distracting you? Is there something else there under the surface? Downward facing dog, shake it out. Frog pose or seated wide leg fold. So you can sit on the edge of the block for the seated fold. You can use the block for your forehead and your frog. Whichever pose you'd like to take, go there. There's wall space if you like your frog against the wall. Yeah, just customize it. So in your frog, whether you're facing the floor or facing the ceiling, knees at 90 degrees, feet turned out, straight left and straight right. Yeah, so your ankles can flex. Good. And then those of you in the seated fold, toes straight up to the ceiling. Lots of different variations going on. Stay here and breathe. And that's the thing, right? Like everyone has a pose in their practice that's super challenging and they're like, you're kind of secretly hoping that one gets skipped. That's when your breath gets really interesting when it doesn't feel like you can breathe in that pose, that's when the breath gets interesting. The poses where you're like, yes, got this, cool, this one's in the bag, that's when the breath drifts away. Steady and rhythmic the whole way. Someone cuts you off, your breath gets short. You're in a rush, your breath gets short or disappears completely. Steady and rhythmic, no matter what, unmessable with. Got a few more breaths in your seated fold or your frog pose, steady and rhythmic. Slowly make your way out. Seated single leg extension. When you get back to your mat, no rush. Seated single leg extension when you're there. Right leg out, left heel in towards your right thigh. Fold over your extended leg. Now you worked on the integration in your upper back and now you can stretch it out a little bit. So if you wanna add more stretch, you can take your left hand on the outside of your right foot 
even if you can't reach the outside of your foot, the intention of reaching that direction will start to stretch the muscles around your shoulder blade. More breath. And switch legs, left leg out, right heel in. Now this time it's the right hand on the outside edge of your left foot or reaching towards the outside edge of that foot. Toes up to the ceiling. That heater has only turned on twice all class. That's impressive. <laughs> Seated forward fold, both legs straight out. Hinge right at your hips, fold and melt the upper half of your body to the lower half. Maybe it's a block in front of your feet or a towel around your feet. Steady breath. Draw the outside edges of your feet back towards your face. Yeah, there you go. Tabletop or reverse plank. Plank palms behind your hips and lift your chest up to the ceiling. The more you press your fingertips and thumbs into the floor, the more the front of your chest can stretch out. The pec minor right at the edges of your chest. One more breath. Lower down. Fish pose. I'd say with a block between your shoulder blades. Yeah, and you can adjust the height on the block if you need to. Make sure the top of your head can touch the floor. And if it doesn't, you just make an adjustment with the block. So you've got active stretch and you've got passive stretch. Right now in your fish pose, it's passive. The block supports you, your hands support you, and the whole front of your chest peels open. Different from when you're pressing the block between your palms and making your shoulder blades squeeze in. Now they open up and let gravity do the work. Two more breaths here in your fish. Take a deep breath in together. Big exhale out. One more like that fill up. Big exhale. Make your way off your block, untuck your hands. Let's get upside down. One more inversion opportunity. You get to pick whichever one you want. So check in with your shoulders while you're upside down and just see if something has shifted for you. You did a lot of work. A lot of work. See if there's more integration or maybe in shoulder stand you can bring your elbows closer together behind you because now you've got room. Yes. Maybe in waterfall, you can press your shoulder blades further down into the mat than you usually can. Nice control handstands. Ooh, that's a good one, Kelly. That was a solid one. Another breath or two if you're in a headstand or handstand. Shoulder stands, make your way to plow. Long legs in the plow. You can have your hands on the floor or on your low back. I'm a big fan of hands on the low back because it's more supportive. Then deaf yogi, bend your knees, hug them around the sides of your head. Slowly lower down, piece by piece. Draw your knees into your chest. Give them a squeeze. Supine twist right. Drop your knees one way, twist and look the opposite way. Really melt both of those shoulder blades straight down into the mat, even if that means your top knee is floating in space a bit. Supine twist, other way. Both shoulder blades straight down.
They might even nestle closer in towards your spine here. Yeah. Soup to Baddha Konasana. Press the soles of your feet together, your big toe mounds together. Let your bones be heavy down to the mat. Shavasana. Let your legs stretch out long. You've got your cold eye towel by the upper corner of your mat. Let yourself settle, settle, settle. Take a long breath in through your nose. Feel yourself all the way up. Exhale it out. Let your entire body rest easy on your mat. Deepen your breath. Bring some movement back to your hands and your feet. And plant your feet on the floor and rock onto your right side.
With your eyes still closed, press down and rise up. Take a comfortable seat. Inhale, reach your hands overhead. Exhale, thumbs to heart center. We'll finish our practice together with three final ohms. Deep breath in. Uh, breath in exhale it out thumb knuckles to forehead center thank you all so much coming into the studio signing in virtually and making a very sweaty integration class happen namaste good work everybody okay if you borrowed blocks just leave them back by the cubby so i know which ones need to be uh doused with spray ratana dana thanks for joining us online have an awesome rest of your Tuesday, and hopefully I will see you on Thursday. I promise we won't do a lot of block work on Thursday. We're not going to do that, so you're okay to come on Thursday. Yes. <laughs>